prejudice. Wrote a song about it. Like to hear it? Here it go. Freedom This is your boy, Dizzy Mack, here with the First Lady of Sports Talk, the one and only Shrew Smith, joined by the ever, the ever so lovely Shimmy Shea girls, and our panel, which includes Art Chu, Stadium Ventures, businessman extraordinaire, Joe Marcus Mind Miller, and Lynn Krieger, Houston's hottest comedy. First lady, I'm ready. I know you're ready. So let's jump into it. what you saying. Each week we try to figure out what is going on in the sports world. Not the plays of the week, more like the players of the week. Are they trying to tell us something? So we ask, what you saying? Fly, little birdie, fly. Time keeps on slipping into the future. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. So I want to fly like an eagle to the sea. Fly like an eagle, let the spirit carry me. I want to fly, fly right into the future. The little birdie known as Coach Steve Spurrier wishes he could fly away like a gamecock from past comments where he had said he made coach two or three years. Apparently, the other teams in the SEC are using those comments to wage a negative recruiting campaign using his age of 70 to imply if recruited, he will not be there to coach. Does Steve look 70? According to the team doctors, he has the shape of a 50-year-old man. Have you ever seen someone, some of these 50-year-old guys? Can Steve fly far away from father time? Jim Calhoun, Connie Mack. Bobby Bowden and the Steve Miller Band are asking, what you saying? Well, mm. it, it's interesting. You know, the SEC, they've had a couple of issues with their coaches. You know, first it was Nick Saban. He put his foot in his mouth about the deadline for college players entering into the NFL draft, which, you know, sparks comments from Plaxico Burris about how Saban lied about him leaving the team. Now Coach Spurrier has to defend that he's not retiring because of his age. Well, how all this talk about retirement started, I mean, you know me, I like to go into timelines. And this started back in December 2014 when Spurrier told a newspaper to state that he was planning to stay two or three years. And after making those comments, he lost several recruits because they were not going to sign if he wasn't going to be there. So in January, the school official extended his contract to 2018 to show that he was committed. Well, a few days ago at the SEC Media Day, Coach Spurrier told reporters he actually considered retiring at the end of the season, but he was rejuvenated because the Gamecocks won the bowl game against the Miami Hurricanes. Now, just like Saban, because he put his foot in his mouth with the media, everybody is now discussing his age again. You know, it's a retirement yep. time. I mean, he needs to let sleeping dogs lie as far as I'm concerned. And then he uh, had the nerve to have an impromptu news conference telling fans and the recruits, don't listen to the enemies. <laughs> I think the enemies. So I guess all the other teams are now enemies. The bottom line is Coach Spurrier, you know, he just can't fly away from father time. He is getting older, but you know what? Just because he's getting older doesn't mean he can't coach. I mean, there's been other coaches that coach long past their age, you know. Let's look at Bill Snyder. He's still coaching at Kansas City State. He's 75 years old. Frank Solowich, he's 70, and he's coaching Ohio University. And don't forget about the late, great Eddie Robinson and Joe Paterno. I mean, they coached well until they were really old, old men. So age is nothing but a number. So Coach Spurrier needs to shut up and just coach. All right, I'm going to go to our panel. I'm going to start off with Dizzy Mac. What do you think about this, Dizzy Mac? First lady, another coach putting his foot in his mouth. He didn't have to say nothing. He could have just stepped away because he knows the SEC is competitive all the way through the recruiting. So he did not have to say anything. 
could have just kept it to herself, bowed out gracefully. But that's not who the ball coach is. He doesn't bow out gracefully. He says what he says, and he doesn't hold back. But wrong move, because teams are going to be at his recruit saying, you know, the old ball coach isn't going to coach you for your whole career, so you might as well come over here to Alabama, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, LSU, all these other teams. Bad move, ball coach. You didn't have to say nothing. Now, you got your foot in your mouth. <laughs> All right, let me let me go to Len. Len, what do you think? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I, you know, I'm actually I'm actually a coach um, in, here in Houston, Texas, and I feel like you know, like you said, AJ ain't nothing but a number, and some of the the best coaches I know are, are old men, and I think Steve Spurrier's um, resume speaks for itself. I mean, before he got there, um, South Carolina only had one 11 win season. And since he's been there, I believe uh, they've had five or six now, and I know he is 4-0 in his last four bowl games, so I don't really feel like um, it's his age. It's just a ploy for, you know, because the SEC is cutthroat. It's the best conference. It's like NFL White or NFL Junior. I mean, you're going to get the best players in that conference, so, of course, they're going to use any loophole or anything they can do to gain leverage and recruits. And um, I feel like uh, Coach Spurrier – he could coach well into his, uh, you know, maybe mid seventies, even maybe even eighties, like uh, Coach Paterno did. So that's my take on it. Okay. So Art, do you want to give your opinion about this situation with Spurrier? Looks like I'm going to make it three votes in a row. Age is absolutely just a number. I mean, Spurrier, he, he's known as an offensive genius, right? He's an offensive mastermind. As long as he's keeping to put points on the board, who cares what his age is? And as long as they're competing, just, you know, that bowl record speaks for itself. Uh, plus, you know, it's all about how they relate to the players. And even when uh, when Bobby Bowden got, got up there in age, he was still relating to his players, but then you could just see the performance drop off, and that, that's when it was time to go. But it's, but those guys are old in number, but uh, they're young at heart, and you could tell it. And, uh, and Plus, Spurrier still gives a great uh, press conference. he got to enjoy it when he, uh, when he comes off with the one-liners. Yeah, yeah, he looks young too because he really has a head full of hair too. Still, all right, Joe. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is Chris Bates. I I I I I be out the studio for more. I done locked the door because I I saw the first lady over there looking as fine as usual. I just want to know where the first lady be getting them bad shoes from. Them shoes are smoking. I, you know, I, I am jealous because I can't get no men version of them shoes that she be wearing. But I, I just wanted to let y'all know that uh, 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 as long as they got that little blue pill, age ain't nothing but a number. <laughs> right, spit face. I see you drop into the studio. All right, Joe Might is mine. Let's talk about Spurrier. First lady. I agree with everyone else on the panel. Age is nothing but a number. But we've got a real problem here because no high school blue chipper wants to go someplace to play under a genius to have that genius disappear. That genius is the key to getting him to the NFL. And parents, which weigh in on those decisions, are going to be a big deal. Now, Spurrier is smooth, and he's a recruiter because, after all, who wanted to go to the Gamecocks before Spurrier? But this is a real problem because the SEC has other choices, and I think Spurrier just got the Gamecocks cherry-picked for the next few years. <laughs> okay, Joe. I see. Yeah, you're right. Those recruits, I mean, they're looking at that man's age, definitely looking at his age. All right, well, Dizzy Mac, over to you. I'm going to knock you out. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years rocking my peers to the suckers of fear, making the tears rain down like a milestone. Listen to the bass go boom. Explosion. Overpower. Over the competition I'm towering. Wrecking shots when I drop these lyrics that'll make you call the cops. Don't you dare stare. You better move. Don't ever compare me to the rest that'll all get you sliced and diced. Competition paying up price. I'm going to knock you out. Huh? Mama said knock you out. Huh? We're not talking about the New York Bombers, Texas Outlaws, or 
the Los Angeles Thunderbirds. We are talking about the knockout punch some Boston fans are waiting to land on Red Sox manager John Farrell. The season is looking a tad bit bleak, given their record is under 500. Wasn't this the guy who managed the Red Sox to their first World Series in forever? Are the fans overreacting? Is it the coaching or the players? How hard would it be for a World Series winning manager to get a new gig? Tony La Rosa, Casey Stengler, Sparky Addison, and Joe Torre are asking, What you saying? Well, Terry Tito Francona actually won two World Series titles with the Red Sox, because that's my team. I'm a Red Sox fan from that, that, that little little guy in the best girl was naked with little semi shake girls around him. So I know the Red Sox. And, yeah, John Farrell won in 2013. And, hey, you know, he's done a very good job. Are the fans overreacted? Yes, because they've been spoiled. They've been on top for the last 10, 12 years in the in the, in the AL East. Yeah, it's hard to always consistently fight against injuries, free agency, you lose losing players, you gain them players, different changes. So, yeah, it, it's it's a little bit of a hardship sometimes, building a above 500 team. They, they, they've been on a losing streak, yes, no doubt. But, hey, every team has to go through it. I think the players respect him. For the most part, I think he's been able to do his thing. And I think it would be a mistake getting rid of John Farrell. But you know how these Boston fans are. They are looking for a winner, looking for somebody who is a competitor in the AL East. John, all I can say is just keep doing your best, man. Keep doing your best because you may be on the lookout for a new job, and you will get one. Nobody's going to pass up a World Series champion manager. Hey, let's go to the panel and see what's going on. Art, man, you're from the East Coast. What's going on? What you, what, what you saying about this? Absolutely. Well, first off, being a Philly and a St. Louis guy, I'm, I'm a National League guy. So, frankly, you know, if the Red Sox don't do well, I'm not I'm not crying for him. But you know, look, hey, look, he 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 won that World Series with uh, with with a lineup. You know, the power meat of that lineup he inherited mostly from from Francona and what what uh, Theo Epstein had put together. And so, I, I don't think he's as 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 much a hero for that that he is a goat for it for 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 them doing poorly now. I mean he can only do as well as the as, as the lineup that he's given. And if you're going to look at anybody for that slide, look at look at the general mm-hmm. manager. You know Epstein leaves, Charrington comes in. They do okay, but then they take some risks with uh, with uh, what Pablo Sandoval, Hanley Ramirez. You know two high profile guys this year that are that are not really not turning out well. And then, of course, mm-hmm. those, with, with, you know, in, in, in Major League Baseball, it comes down to the pitching, right? You, you got to you got to have the solid pitching. So, so they've, they, you know, they had a few injuries. Uh, you know, the, the, a few guys haven't come through. You know, Joe Kelly, our guy from the Cardinals, has been doing okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just not I'm not one to stick a fork in him just yet. But I was not one to put him on a pedestal uh, when, when, when he won two years into the job. Also, wow, you heard it from my man Art too. Well, let's keep it rolling. Man, man, come on now. You know Houston's in the AL now. What's your take? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, my take on it, you know, we, we uh, live in a microwave society now, and everybody wants results right now, and they want to be able to, you know, have all these championships right away. And I feel like um, after, you know, Terry Francona and, and they, they broke their own curse in 2004, the curse of the Bambino, I think Boston needs to just chill out, eat some beans, and, you eat some clam chowder and you celebrate. I mean, nobody ever thought <laughs> oh, oh, oh. nobody ever thought that they were going to break the curse of the Bambino. I mean, it took 86 years to break. So I mean, I feel like they still need to be celebrating. Now, I know if 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 Cleveland, uh, the Indians or the Cavaliers were were to win, you know, the World Series, the NBA Finals, I'm, I'm, or the Super Bowl with the Browns, I know that they would be celebrating for the next you know 100 years because it's been that long. But I mean. I feel like, hey, hey, um, hey, brother Lenny, don't forget the Cubs in that list. 
<laughs> yeah, oh yeah, the Cubs too. You're right. Um, I just feel like sometimes, especially I'm a coach, so I can relate best to that. I know it's it's not what have you done for me, it's what have you done for me lately. And people, you know, they turn the blind eye to, you know, the things that have transpired in, in the last 10, 12 years, like Dick and Max said, and sometimes they just get anxious and they get uh, antsy and they just want results now. And I don't think uh, you can do that when you have a club like they do right now. Wow. Well, hey, you know, Shimmy said, girl, fill up that my mouth is all around. Take care of my guys because stepping up to the plate now is my man. Mine is mine. What's going on, Midas Mine? Dizzy Max, it's kind of crazy how fickle fans are. You know, you lose for a long time, and then you start winning, and you want to make up all that time every year in a row. Yeah. And it just doesn't happen that way. And so you got Farrell strapped with a team that's maybe got a reduced talent level. And like Art said, you really need three real power arms in that pitching rotation. So if you don't have everything you need, I dumped it all on this poor guy. Well, fans are going to do that. On the other hand, it's way too early to call it a day. If he wins and gets in a winning streak and the players still trust the management, fans will turn right around and love him just tomorrow. Wow. Yes, yes. Well, hey, Albert Pujols sure loved the uh, pitches he was getting the other day where he was hitting the ball out the park against the Red Sox. Damn. I mean, I'm like, ha, <laughs> 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 like, But, uh, hey, we say the best for last. My girl, First Lady, come on over here and give us your take on the Boston Red Sox situation. Well, you know, my take is going to be a little bit different because I don't think the fans are overreacting because that's what they're accustomed to uh, doing. I mean, let's face it, Boston has replaced their managers quite frequently. I mean, in the past, what, uh, six years, uh, they've had uh, like four or five managers. Uh, So, you know, Terry Francona, he probably was the most heralded of all their managers. I mean, he won two World Series. And they got rid of him. He was fired. That's something that Boston will do. They will fire their managers. Now, is it right? I don't think so because, you know, as Art said, I mean, the team wasn't, um, you know, doesn't have that many great players. They um, definitely had gotten Ramirez. And I think Ramirez is um, playing in the outfield, and he was used to playing um, shortstop or in the infield. So, so I mean, he's in a new position for him. So it, it, it's just to me that, the manager is obviously the one who's going to be blamed for when a team doesn't do well. I mean, you can't fire all of the team, the players, so that's not going to happen. So, But I just think the Boston fans are so accustomed to the team and the ownership getting rid of the manager, and that's what they've done, regardless if they won the um, World Series. So it's going to be inevitable for um, John Farrell to be fired eventually, and it may come sooner than later. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because Kyle Yastrzemski, Fred Lynn, Jim Rice, Dwight Evans, Carlton Fitz aren't going to be walking through them doors no more unless they're just going to be paying full price for a ticket. <laughs> but uh, first lady, take us a break, please. The first three listeners to email us or send a shout-out why the coaches mentioned in the Fly Birdie segment Belong Together will receive a $25 gift from our friends at sportsacademy.com. And the hint is, it's about their age. Last week winner was Jennifer Mizell, who guessed correctly, they all made money from being in a Spike Lee movie. Hmm. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we have a performance from Be Ice on the first part of Shout Out. Free Mr. Vibe. Lots of roles for everybody. Beautiful, just beautiful. Oh, how adorable is that? Edible Arrangements has a fresh fruit bouquet to make any occasion special. Our bouquets are made with fresh premium fruit. 
arranging a variety of stunning displays, making every occasion special with edible arrangements. Uh, guys, the baby's over here. Oh, all right. Oh, okay, yes. And all don't right. even think about touching my edible arrangements. For pickup or delivery nationwide, call 877-DO-FRUIT. 877-DO-FRUIT. Or... Go to ediblearrangement.com. That's ediblearrangement.com. Yeah. Oh, my. Mm. Uh, <laughs> what a nice looking baby you've got there. Make all your special moments. Aww. Moments with edible arrangements. The music flows in from around the globe to get a shout out from the past. First lady, I cannot wait to hear the music from B. Lee. On Shout Out, we feature new independent artists who are looking to find their shining star. If we like what we hear, we'll give the track a shout out. If we don't like it, we hit the mute. This morning, we have B. Ice out of St. Louis with a track from his album, Rockstar. DJ, let's hear Jealous. <laughs> Shout out 
Are we hitting the mute button? I'm going to start off with Joe by his mind. Joe, who did you think about this song, Jealous? First lady, did that guy steal some of Bill Cosby's quaaludes? What's going on here? <laughs> I just thought it was ridiculous. I don't know. I, look, the mute button. That is, it's the I'm mute. jealous that I am not recorded if he's recording. That's ridiculous. Okay, Joe. All right, let me go to Len. Len, what did you think of Jealous? Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to be a hater. I mean, uh, you can. Uh, I guess I'd shout it out. I mean, it's not really my cup of tea. Uh, I don't like slow jams per se, but uh, it kind of made me want to find my woman and get on top of her. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay, all right. So you know, oh, 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 jealous. Oh, oh, you will oh, oh, find oh, your oh, woman. Oh, all right, Len. Hey, go ahead. Got to, got to, got to <laughs> all right. Okay, Art, what did you think about the ice? First lady, I had to reach for my other cup of my next cup of coffee here to wake up a little bit after that one. I gotta <laughs> say, I was a little pale <laughs> and dark and depressed. Hey, B Dice, another a fellow St. Louis in here. I know things are not that great here in St. Louis, but it's not that bad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some more energy there. Good. I want to hear some more. He's got some more energy in that album. Come on, we got it. Uh, that was depressing. All right, Dizzy Mac. What did you think of Be Ice and Jealous? Hey, wow! It's like uh, he had some a uh, couple a couple of that uh, lean from Houston, man. He was whoa. I, I mean, I, I was finding that really not even um, interesting. I mean, he took that haterade with that lean. <laughs> but no, no, we we hitting the mute button, man. It, I don't know, man. You should have gotten Nelly or somebody out of St. Louis. Okay, muting it, Ronnie B. What did you also think about jealous? I mean. Well, I, I don't see anything anyone needs to be jealous about coming from him. <laughs> I, 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 I'm starting to wonder about Lenny. Because <laughs> <laughs> last, last time I looked, his lady was kind of cute. He don't need jealous to get interested. <laughs> So I'm like, you know, I think Liddy was just trying to be, be, be a little bit nice, you know, to our, 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 our St. Louis crowd. Lenny must be going to St. Louis. To enter. See, Lenny getting ready to go in two up in St. Louis. Well, you don't want to offend nobody. So we we got to, okay, Len, we, 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 we know you got to be a little politically correct to them tickets get sold. But uh, I, I, I'm going to be ice. Uh, you need to heat it up, brother. You, buddy. Yeah, like you said, the, uh, Ronnie B, they don't have anything to be jealous about, but he's definitely is not a rock star, so he named his album Rock Star, too, so I'm definitely going to mute that song. I don't think I need to say it anymore because I think the panel said enough. Um, we'll see on part two of Shout Out, it will have another performance from Be Ice, and hopefully it will be better than Jealous. Is that the sound of my favorite underwater friend over there splashing. Is it time for Flip It? All right, it's time for Flip It, where our hosts defend the point and then flip the script and defend the opposing view. In a recent poll of several GMs and NFL team officials anonymously, they ranked the top quarterbacks, and some may find it surprising that Russell Wilson was declared a second-tier QB. We ask the panel to defend. Russell Wilson is a good quarterback that has the benefit of being on a great team with a great coach, running game, and defense. 
the survey says, second tier. Joe Midas Mind Miller, the fan. Well, Ronnie B, going to two Super Bowls, you think maybe this is a top tier quarterback. However, you got one of the best defenses in the league. You got maybe the greatest coach in the league for getting young players inspired to go lay their lives on the line for you. And you're in the NFC West. So now that San Francisco is kind of declining, you're beating up on teams. I'm thinking Russell Wilson is a good quarterback and probably a great game manager, but he's not a Brady. He's not a a, a, a Peyton Manning, even in younger years. He's nobody's, uh, you know, Marino. And you wouldn't look for Russell Wilson to carry a team. And I'm thinking that that's what GMs were talking about. Can he not make mistakes? Yes. But could he produce the win if it was all on his shoulders? I don't think so. Second tier. All right, you heard the defense from the Midas mind, but we're going to check out what Lynn has to say. Lynn, defend Russell Wilson, second tier. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to actually say that he, he's, he's, he's first tier quarterback, and uh, I'm a big proponent of the underdog. And uh, Russell Wilson, I mean, he, he's a gamer, he's a winner, and uh, he's proven himself time and time again. You always have a chance with him um, at the quarterback position. If you look last year, in the NFC Championship game, everybody rode off Seattle. They thought that the game was over, and he came back and had a miraculous drive, and uh, he kept them alive. And I felt like uh, him and Marshawn Lynch both did that. Um, I, I feel like uh, you can never write him off. He's just like an Andrew Luck. You know, nothing scarier than, than Russell Wilson or Andrew Luck right now in third down situation. And uh, if you're behind, I don't feel like you're ever out of the game with him. All right, we heard the defense from Lynn, but we have to remind the panel this is flip it, where you defend the point, and then we flip the script and defend the opposing view. I'm all busy, Mac. Defend. Russell Wilson is a good QB. Yeah, he's got the benefit of having the Legion of Dome defense. He has the, uh, uh, a good head coach, a great head coach. You know, you got beast mode running. I mean, hey, he doesn't have to do anything, manage the game. He can play it safe. You know, again, he he, he definitely showed he was second tier in this last Super Bowl because he made a second tier throw on the interception. That proves he's second tier. The first Super Bowl that they won, the defense hadn't jumped on. They put it like this. They scored a safety early in the game, and it just snowballed on Peyton from there. The defense was just overwhelming, returning interceptions. I mean, hey, you know, that wasn't Russell Wilson. He just managed the game, handed off, made the safe play, which lands him at second tier because he has won a Super Bowl. But he's a good quarterback. That's about it. Second tier, yeah, that's where they should have him. That's where he is. Hey, he's young. He's not up there yet. But yeah, second tier because again, he is safe. He's safe. He's he's the guy that you want your daughter to date. He's safe. The daughter to date. All right. We're gonna move on to art. Russell Wilson's a good quarterback. The survey says second tier, defend. Game manager, absolutely. Look at that team. That team's all about defense and running the ball. He's a great quarterback if he needs a quarterback to hand the ball off to Marshawn Lynch 30 times a game. Just look at the number of passes he throws. He throws, what, 400, a little under, over 400 passes a season. And while the other guys are up there, 600, you know, Drew Brees is up in the, in the mid-600s. He's just not required to do that much because they have a great surrounding cast around him. So, uh, yeah. hey, anytime you could replace your quarterback with Alex Smith 
and not see too much of a drop off. And nothing against Alex Smith, but I don't think he's a top tier quarterback. <laughs> you know, I, you, you, got, you got a guy that's, that's he's going to get make, make a short pass. He's not going to turn the ball over too much. But he's, if you have to absolutely win the game, are you, how many of us are really going to vote for for Russell Wilson over some of those other guys if, you, if the game is on the line? Plus, hey, when you get your fantasy draft coming up, right? Where, where's Russell Wilson on that list when you're going to draft your fantasy quarterback? I, mean, I don't think he's in people's top top ten. Second tier. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, first lady, the fan. Russell Wilson is a second tier quarterback because if Seattle has to rely on Russell Wilson's throwing ability week to week, Seattle would not be a championship team. I mean, this is evident because during 2014 regular season, Wilson's pass EPA was 60.2%, and he was ranked number 15. The top-tier quarterbacks are in the 80s and the 90s. Most people feel Wilson cannot lead his team with passing. Seattle offense is built by rushing the ball. They do the read option with Russell Wilson running most of the time or throwing short passes. Is Russell Wilson a game changer with his ability to pass? I don't think so. This is why he is second tier. If Russell Wilson would go to a losing team like the Titans or the Cleveland Browns, he probably wouldn't even be second tier. He would easily drop to the third tier quarterback because to be a number one tier quarterback, you need the ability to win the game with your arm. And Russell Wilson's arms are too short along with his passing game. <laughs> That's my girl. That's my girl. That's my girl. Russell Wilson, your arms are too short to box with God. Well, <laughs> we're going to flip it. As you know, this is flip it where we flip the script. You heard the decent, but we're going to flip it. We're going to flip it. So we're going to ask the panel to defend. Russell may not be Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, but he is a winner. Sounds like somebody was drinking the haterade. Russell is a first tier QB. Joe Midas Mine Miller defend. Running B is easy to see. Russell Wilson is a top tier quarterback. What do you want from a top tier quarterback? You want a guy who can lead your team, motivate your team, think through the hard situations, even if you're not tall enough even if your arms aren't long enough. Whatever you have to do, if 80% of your passes have to be in roll-out situations, why not if he makes it work? The fact is he completes in the mid-60s. And maybe that's not in the 80s, but that's what maybe the greatest quarterback in NFL history had. Joe Montana only completed 63.2, but he completed the right 63.2. And when the game is on the line, somebody helps a team get to two Super Bowls in a row, even if they're very young. Russell Wilson is a winner, and that's all I want my quarterback to do, win. You keep the stats, give me the games. Preach. Mm. Mm. Tony Romo for Russell Wilson, huh? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you heard <laughs> Joe Mike. <laughs> All right, we're going to uh, – Lynn, defend. <laughs> Russell Wilson is a first-year quarterback. Yeah, my apologies, uh, Ronnie. I think I had too much of that lean you were talking about earlier this morning. Ooh. <laughs> I misunderstood. Uh, I guess now since I've already defended him as a top tier, I guess i got to go with the second tier. And uh, like uh, Mr. Chu said um, – you know, I wouldn't have him on my fantasy team, so I think he's too small. And one day, you know, all that running and gunning that he does is going to catch up with him. And um, I wouldn't have him as my quarterback because uh, I need production and I need somebody that is going to score points. All right. We heard the defense from from, from Lynn, <laughs> who's flip-flopping and flip. Yeah, I'm sorry. But we're gonna... <laughs> Leave that lean alone. <laughs> oh, and the boy. Yeah, but, but then he was already uh, getting on top of the old lady. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Art defend. Russell is a first-year quarterback. They've been drinking that haterade. He's been in the league three years, and he's taken him to the Super Bowl two out of three. So he, he, his Super Bowl percentage to me is six over 600%. I think most teams would take that. Well, what do you want out of your quarterback? You want him to lead you to the Super Bowl and get to that championship game. Two out of three, that is, that is not bad. It's, it's too, too much reliance on stats nowadays. This fantasy football stuff is just killing the killing people's perception. It, look, it reminds me of, you know, Buddy Ryan talking about Chris Carter. All he does is catch touchdown passes. All, all Russell Wilson does is take him to the Super Bowl. What else do you want to say? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you pass the hat around downtown Seattle and that's the average average Seahawks fan, they say, we'd be raising some money to keep Russell in town. I think you'd have a pretty full hat pretty quickly. The guy is a winner. Hey, hey, Peyton Manning got the stats, but who got the win? Little Eli. <laughs> little brother. Little brother. <laughs> Dizzy Mac. <laughs> hey, well, you know, I'm going to come from a different angle on this to show that this man is a top-tier quarterback. What other quarterback can be a part of each element of your team? He's part of the running game. Because, again, you turn your back, he's running up behind your heels. He's gaining yards, a lot of yards. The passing game, hey, he can do it. He's, he, he's accurate, and he knows how to gunsling. People, people forget about the Green Bay playoff game, how he had such a horrible game, but then turned it around. And even in the Super Bowl, you know, you taking chances going down the field. Yes, the receiver made a – I love the catch, but he put the ball down there to put his team in position to win. Hey, the defense, he makes sure that the defense has the field position to attack and always go after the opposing offense. I mean, special teams, he helps the punter, the field goal kicker. He puts them in position to be able to make makeable field goals, to be able to punt, get you get get the defense you know, make them make the opposing offense pin them down. I mean, the man is part of everything that they do, and that makes him a top tier quarterback. And then you start throwing how he gets his team into the playoff and into the Super Bowl. You can't help but to say he's a top tier quarterback. I don't know what they're doing. They're sipping on that haterade all day, but don't hate. Congratulate. Hey, Jimmy Shea girls. Uh, get that custom man. You know, he's sitting on that man over there. <laughs> Too much. I'm already out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First lady, the fan. Russell Wilson was shafted regarding these rankings. He should have been included in the first tier, replacing Andrew Luck. Yes, I mm. said it. Andrew mm. Luck. Mm. Wilson has a better total QBR than Luck, and Luck's pass EPA is little, just a little higher than Wilson, but not in the 80s and 90s like the other first-tier players. Wilson is a Super Bowl champion, and Andrew Luck is the only quarterback listed in the first tier that was not a Super Bowl champion. He has only won three playoff games. So why is Andrew Luck being picked over Wilson? A black brother can't be in the first tier? Wilson demonstrates that he is a top quarterback because he's a leader, has the ability to make others better, and can make clutch plays when needed. He may not be a consistent passer, but when it is necessary for him to make a great pass, he is on target. He was the main reason that the Seahawks made a miracle comeback against the Packers in the NFC Championship. Can a brother get some recognition? Ronnie B. Not, not, not when they drink in that lean. But uh, <laughs> you've heard the first part of Flip It. We're going to first lady take us from break. Ronnie B. <laughs> yes, Dizzy back. He said, Ronnie B, Ronnie hey. B, stay tuned. Hey. Up next, the funnies and our favorite underwater friend, on Flip It Part 2. Plus he's first here because he dates Sierra. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. 
Are you getting enough? I bet you'd love more, right? Well, AdamandEve.com wants to give you more with 10 free gifts. First, you'll get a sexy surprise for her. Second, a specially selected toy for him. And third, a little something we know you'll both enjoy. Plus, you'll get six full-length adult movies on DVD. And number 10, free shipping on your entire order. So what do you have to do to get your 10 free gifts? It's not hard. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy, sexy piece of lingerie, or anything you desire. Just enter offer code FREE61 at checkout, and you'll get all 10 free gifts. Go check out adamandeve.com today. Select one item and get 10 free gifts, including free shipping. When you enter offer code FREE61, that's F-R-E-E-61 at adamandeve.com. Welcome back. You are still listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. It's time for the funnies. Dizzy Mac, over to you. First lady, we have our 24th Need to Grow story of 2015. Okay, everybody check this one out. Florida man hit butts, butts, and a raise over $2 fare. <laughs> yes, you heard it right. You sure that wasn't Ocho Cinco? Oh, okay, now let me stop. Hey, you would think. Police are working to identify a Florida man who apparently knocked himself out for a few seconds by headbutting a bus <laughs> out of anger over a two dollar fare. Man, this fool. The Winter Haven Police Department which posted video of the incident to a Facebook page, said the man got off the bus about 11.35 a.m. Saturday when it arrived at his stop. Police said the man told the driver he wanted to go to another location, and he became extremely agitated when the driver told him it would be an additional $2 fare to travel to the other location. The driver locked the bus and went inside the enclosed part of the bus terminal, leaving the passenger sitting alone on a bench. The man walked away but returned to the still locked bus four minutes later. The video shows the man getting in a running start before headbutting the bus, <laughs> shattering a glass window. Wow. The man falls to the ground and appears to be knocked out for a few seconds before collecting himself and running away. Whoa. Talking about uh, Ram Tough. File this under what <laughs> <laughs> you get bad regarding bus fare. Ouch. Police wrote on Facebook. <laughs> Man, he is a needy to grow again. <laughs> First lady, now, now you down there in Florida. What are y'all doing? Did he have some lean? Did he have some lean before he got on the bus? I guess so. You know, we always got stories from Florida with all the problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, I tell you, what they smoke? They smoking that ooh wee down there. Woo, I tell you. But gosh darn it, there's always somebody getting water on my bearskin rug, splashing. It must be time for our favorite underwater friend. It's time for Flip It. Get that one off my rug, Flip It. <laughs> All right. Time for Flip It, where our hosts defend a point and then flip the script and defend the opposing view. Mike Tomlin, the coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers, was recently uh, signed for, re-signed for a cool 7 million snackaroos yearly. Through 2018. Now, that's a lot of moolah. Panel defend. Tomlin is a good coach who happened to inherit Big Ben and a few stellar defensive players. The Steelers may have overpaid. Joe Midas mine defend. Ronnie B., I think Mike Tomlin is a good coach. And I'm a guy that likes to see black coaches get a chance and really go. But is Mike Tomlin really anything more than Barry Switzer was? 
didn't he just inherit Ooh. something that worked? Ooh. And since inheriting that, we've seen a Super Bowl and some really disjointed seasons where they're off and they're on and they're inconsistent. And he looks great on the sideline, and he's always extremely excited, and you can tell that players love him. But unlike Russell Wilson, he does not get consistent production. The Steelers love their coaches, and I'm glad. Since they love their coaches, they pay their coaches. But um, I don't expect anything to change for Pittsburgh but with Mike Tomlin. Mm-hmm. They overpaid. Mm. Uh-oh, 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 that was the minus mind. Uh, Art Chu, the man who knows a little bit about money himself, defend. So are we def- defending paying him that money or defending not paying him that money? We're defending him not paying them that they might have overpaid. They might have overpaid, yeah, because, look, I mean, look, he's been there how many years? He's been there eight, nine years or so, came in as a young guy. They've won one Super Bowl championship pretty early in his career, right? But uh, since then, you know, what have they done? They're they're okay. They have a system that works well. He he, he doesn't mess up the system. You know, look, the Steelers have always been about you know the, the you know the Rooney family and and, and, and a consistent management, and, and they can have a lot of different people, in, in my mind, coaching that coaching that team that are that are going to stay within that system. And uh, you know, if, if he if he was if, if you're going to pay for Jack to come in and, and, and get you the Super Bowl and win that Super Bowl, it's been been a bunch of years. It's been uh, and maybe he just had he had some uh, some early luck with that early lineup, and then uh, and, you know now what is what is he doing on his own for the last six seven years? Hasn't gotten there. Mm. All right, we heard Art. Okay, let's see what uh, Dizzy Mac has to say. Overpaid. Overpaid is the key word here. You inherited the team. I'm always in constant debate with my brother, Bonnie, about his Steelers. He's a Steelers fan. I told him, big bro, they both paid for this man. What does he do? What is his one specialty? Is it offense? Is it defense? Is it special teams? All I see him do is sit there on the sideline, and it's, it's, it's hopeless. He can't help Big Ben. He can't, get him a, he can't, you know, get him a consistent running game. Can't get him consistent receivers. He, they, they leave in Pittsburgh and scores. Mike Wallace ran out of Pittsburgh. Um, 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 the other receiver who went to Denver, and uh, I forgot his name. Uh, his name escapes me, but just like he escaped Pittsburgh, he ran. <laughs> seven million. Hey, where was that seven million, Mr. Rooney, when Chuck Noll was winning them championships? Where was that money then? You want to pay Chuck Noll that kind of money? He deserved that. I don't care if you go back and retro pay his family. They should get the money. <laughs> Man, overpaying. You know, put all your money in a coach that, inherited the players, and since then, he's come up short, shorter than short. Matter of fact, he should be wearing shorts on the sideline. That's how short he's come up. (laughs) All right. Okay. Defend. Tomlin is a good coach who happened to inherit Big Ben and a few stellar defensive players. The Steelers may have overpaid Lenny. Big land. Uh, yes, the fan. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. I'm gonna definitely say that seven million dollars is too much money for an ins- inconsistent coach uh, like Tomlin is. Um, he's good when he's on, but you know that's few and far between nowadays. And I don't feel like um, the seven million works what he's currently doing as a head football coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. All right. Okay. Let's move on over to the first lady. The fan. The Rooneys do not like change. The Pittsburgh Steelers have had only three head coaches since 1969. So let's face it, Mike Tomlin benefited from the fact that this team likes stability, and he used it to obtain a big contract. Tomlin is overrated. What has he done since winning 
you know, actually says appearing in the Super Bowl in 2010. Mike coached back-to-back losing season and not even making it to the playoffs in 2012 and 2013. The more I look at this situation, Mike is lucky he has a job. He should have been fired. So he should consider himself lucky to receive a $7 million extension. I mean, come on now. The Rooney's really need to yearly. step out of their box and be like most owners. Don't be scared to get rid of their coaches. Get a new coach. <laughs> Preach. Preach. First lady saying they scared. Okay. Now, all right, fans, you know this is flipping. I can't wait for this defense. All right, panel, defend. Two Super Bowl appearances. You're doing something right. The Steelers got off cheap. Busy Mac, defend. Steelers got off cheap because, again, they could have looked at paying him more, but they got off cheap. Again, you've got two Super Bowl appearances under your belt. You're motivating players. You're winning by just recharging the team. You got players leaving the free agents. You got players uh, injured. But he gets the most. He's able to mine the draft and get players and put them in a system so they can excel. He's done this. He's shown that he can consistently communicate to the players, get them to play at a high level, and get them to play the steal away, which is a tradition. Three coaches and and over 40 years, yeah, this, this man knows what he's doing. The Rooney's got it right. They've done the right thing. Keep him in the fold. Make sure that he continues to steal away. He has done everything that you asked to do. He's kept up with the times. He's kept up with the changing uh, players and through free agency. They've lost some. They've gotten some. And he's also gotten rid of some of those players that weren't buying in. He's not a. He's not scared to get rid of those players. You do it my way or it's the highway, Mike Wallace who hasn't performed up to expectations, you mad and grumbling because you're not getting the ball, well, you don't deserve the ball. And he's not afraid to tell him that. I, I, have you ever seen Mike Tomlin on the sideline, Ronnie B, looking at his players and I telling them, get with it or get gone? He means what he says. They got it right. Give the man the money. All right, we heard the defense from Dizzy Mack, naked, live on the Bear Skid Rub with the Simi Shake Girls. Please pass me a mimosa. And Joe, Midas Mine Miller, defend. They got off cheap. The Roonies are a family, Ronnie. They are really into family, and they protect their family, and it's paid them. I mean, who has more Super Bowls than the Steelers? The fact is, Super Bowls don't come easy. And they were able to squeeze one out of Mike. Mike barely has a winning playoff record. It is five and four. But the team is still a team, and they've held it together. The big reason they got off cheap is because they gave them this seven and a half million dollars for just two more years. They're really saying, you're our family, but you got to come on with something. And we're going to help you now. And so did they get off cheap? Yeah. They got a guy that keeps the team together, a guy that keeps them in contention, a guy with a winning playoff record. And there are only three coaches that make more money than that. That is Pete Carroll, Sean Payton, and Bill Belichick. Now let's take a look at these coaches real quick. Pete Carroll only has one Super Bowl, but he's been the two in a row. Well, Tomlin's been able to do two. He's just only been able to win one. Then you got Sean Payton. He's only had one big year and then a bounty season and then some more trash and last year was trash and he's making that kind of money. And then you got Bill Belichick. Well, if you want to compare anybody to Bill Belichick, maybe – Tyson Gay, Justin Gatlin, the guys who think if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. 
So the Roonies want to do it clean. <laughs> they got the right guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On that note, let's hear from Art Q and the Fed. They got off cheap. They got off super cheap. Tomlin, the poor guy, is a victim of his early success. You know, they always say, don't get too successful too early because then, then everybody's going to be expecting it from you. The guy wins the Super Bowl in his second season there. He's there for, what, eight, eight, nine seasons? Their winning average over that time has got to be, and he's got to probably average a 10 and 6 record, but basically mail it in every year. Pittsburgh fans know they're going to be at least around 10 and 6 and in the, in the playoffs. What other team in the league, what other fans in the league wouldn't give that for the last, for the last nine years to, to, to have that, that level of consistency? When you have a consistent winner like that that's always in the hunt, that's because of good leadership. And the leadership preach, is the preach, coach. Preach. And Tomlin's the winner. <laughs> All right. Okay. Tomlin is a winner. All right. Let's go over to Lynn, the Texans. Cowboys, man. <laughs> The fans, the, the Steelers got, not the Cowboys, Steelers got oh, off the seat. <laughs> My two favorite teams are the Houston Texans and whoever's playing the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. Uh, all right, all right. I would say that uh, the Steelers got off super cheap. They got away with robbery. I think Mike Tomlin is the epitome of the Steelers organization, what it means to be a Steeler. I mean, he's tough-minded, he's hard-nosed, he's accountable. He's exactly what that team needs for the future and to keep progressing and, and to make several playoff and Super Bowl appearances. I think that they got off, um, like I said, with robbery because uh, he has a proven track record and he's just tough-minded. That's what that city needs right now, and that's what they need going forward. They need somebody that's going to be accountable and that's always going to work hard, and I feel like they got that in Tomlin, and they paid way too little for him. Yeah, and he's willing to stand next to the sideline to kind of make the – other player run around, you know. He's a soft player. And he has to deal with the cold, so, I mean, they should pay him an additional million for that. <laughs> an additional million. Hey, hey, all right, okay. Okay, all right, we heard the defense from Lynn, but the first lady has something to say. Mike Conlon is a great young coach. I mean, going to two Super Bowls in two, in two years, I mean, experienced coaches – don't have that on their resume. Tomlin is a player's coach. He knows how to get his players to perform to their potential. He is also well-liked by the Rudys. The problem for Tomlin, his owners are very, very conservative, a.k.a. cheap. They know they need to pay this man the money he deserves because at least the Steelers are in the conversation of making it to the playoffs on a consistent basis. He has never had a losing season. The three years that they didn't make it to the playoffs, they still had a decent um, record. They were nine and seven, and in two years it was eight and eight. So I mean, this man knows what he's doing, and he needs to get paid. So I'm going to say to the Rooneys, can a brother get paid? Pay me. Not even Chuck. No. <laughs> All right, you've heard Flip It from the panel this week. First Lady, please take us to break. On the other side of the break, we have another performance from Be Ice on Shout Out. Please stay tuned. Back rubs for everybody, Shimmy Shake Girls. I'm Boss Hogg, host of The Last Word. When I'm inside or outside of the studio, I have to make sure I wear the best, and that includes the best in eyewear. Ray-Ban eyewear has been worn by those seeking to go from myth to legend. Ray-Ban's selection of legendary styles dating back to 1937 has been worn by the famous, infamous, and everyone in between. Ray-Ban eyewear has stood the test of time. Many of today's top entertainers, athletes, and those who want to make a fashion statement choose from this vast array of styles designed to take you from myth to legendary. To find a store near you or to browse their wide selection, visit Ray Band at www.ray band.com. That's www.rayband.com. Take it from Boss Hall. I say rush it when it comes to Ray Band. They are the last word when it comes to eyewear that will make your style legendary. Holla! Mm-hmm. 
You are listening to Brown, Pan, and Sports. It's time for Shout Out Part 2, the pick and the finale. The music flows from around the globe to get a shout out from the First Lady and the crew. First Lady, over to you. We have a performance from B. Ice. Let's hear the title track from his album, Rock Star. <laughs> I'm going to definitely shout him out because I'm not a hater. Keep doing what you do, B.I. 
He stayed in his lane. All right. Dizzy Knack. What do you think? I'm going to give him a yo. Give him a yo. He, he, he did better than the first yeah. track. Hey, I'm going to give him a yo because, again, like I said, I'm like, all right, hope you got about 20, 22 tracks on that album because uh, you're starting <laughs> to come back this way. Okay, Joe. I know you do first have wedding. a lot to say about Rockstar. No, no, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it real short. The man is consistently bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. Consistently bad. Okay, you gonna keep it short. All right, let me move on to Ronnie B. Ronnie B. Are you gonna give um, B Ice a shout out, or are you gonna hit the mute? Uh, I, you know, I. The only thing I liked about that track was that it was shorter than the first track. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, that the, uh, but but, but I, 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 I do want to say something. The young lady who Huey has in the background sounds like she might have some talent. Now, uh, young lady, uh, you might be a rock star if you get away from B. Ice, because I think B. Ice is smoking some rocks. <laughs> I don't know what the hell he tried to do, but my cat ran out of the room. So I know, I, know, I, I, I don't get it. I, it, it you don't get it. It, 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 it was bad, bad. It was bad. You know, I, I disagree with you, Ronnie B. I'm like, I'm like um, Art and uh, Dizzy Mac, I'm going to give him a yo because I thought he stepped it up a little bit in the rock star. It had a little peppier beat to it, and it was kind of cute. So I, I like the track. So uh, I'm definitely going to shout out with a yo. Oh, so, so, so you going on tour with Lenny in St. Louis too, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I just thought it was a little bit better than the first track. Got to give the man some some recognition. All right, that's the end of the shout out. If you like what you heard from B Ice, check him out on oldgrumpyhouston.com. If you would like to be heard or have any comments, you can send your emails and tracks to panties at oldgrumpyradio.com. It's time to see who will be the hard ball champ. It's time for the picks. Let me quickly go over. The last two weeks where we are with our standings, um, Al Johnson, our guest panelist, he's at 400 points. Joe, you have 300 points. You may want to reconsider Ronnie B. picking your choices. Um, Dizzy Mac, you have 500 points. And I'm <laughs> leading with 1,400 points. Now, you know I led before in the baseball picks, so I'm not getting too worked up about the fact that I'm ahead right now. All right, let's get to the current picks. At the end of our week, Yankees will lead the AL East. 200 points for the correct answer and minus 300 for the incorrect. I'm going to start with Len. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think um, the Yankees will, actually, and that's that's my opinion on it. I don't know really much about East Coast baseball. I, I'm, a, I'm a Houston boy, bred and raised, so – uh, I'm going to say that the Yankees will lead the AL East. You can never uh, underestimate the evil empire. Oh, that's true. Joe, the Yankees will lead. I agree. I agree with Glenn. The Yankees will lead the East, and this is why the Red Sox fans are angry. Okay. Art, who do you have? You have the yes or no. The Yankees will lead the AL East. I'm buying. I'm buying. The Yankees are on a roll. I, I believe they will be leading the AL East. Okay. Dizzy Mac, what's your pick? Yes, they will lead the AL East. All right. Well, I'm going to make it unanimous. A-Rod, A-Rod is off the juice. Off the juice. Okay, I'm making it unanimous. I agree. The Yankees will lead the East because they are on a roll, as Art stated. Tampa Bay will be above 500. 300 for the correct answer, minus 400 for the incorrect answer. Dizzy Mac, going to you first. What happened to Evan Longoria? No, (laughs) it will be under 500. Tampa Bay will be under 500. All right. Art. Yeah, I agree. Tampa Bay will be at 500. I I think they will be under 500. I I don't think they have it. You don't think they have it. Okay. 
Let me go to the land. I'll go against the grain. I'll say Tampa Bay will be above 500. I think they have a good start in pitching and in MLB. That's what you need to win. All right. Joe, might is mine. Tampa Bay will be above 500. First lady, that was a Tampa Bay Rays fan that ran his head into that bus window. They will be below. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, that's who it was? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with, all right, I said uh, um, Tampa Bay will be above 500. Because they're currently at 500, so they just need one good week, and they'll be at above 500. So let's move on. Houston will lead the AL West. 300 for the correct answer and minus 500 for the incorrect. Let me go to that Houston. Uh, I, actually, that's, isn't that NL? Oh, yeah. No, it's AL. Houston is oh, AL. AL now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, AL. Oh, that's right. You in Houston. Okay, all right. That's, that's yeah. why I don't pick. <laughs> <laughs> they, moved, they moved a couple of years ago, I think, to the AL now. They had to balance out the league. So let me go to Len. Len, Houston will lead the AL West. We will absolutely, positively lead the AL West. We just traded for Scott Kazmir, and I feel like this is our time, and we're gonna we're gonna make the run, and we're gonna go to the World Series. Okay, this is at the end of our week, and our week goes from Saturday to Friday. All right, yes, Mark, what do you think? Houston will lead the AL West. I gotta be the contrary on that one. I don't think so. I think the Angels uh, coming on. You know, I'm. I'm uh, us uh, St. Louisans, we still love Pujols, and Albert's coming on in L.A. I think the Angels are going to keep it hot. Mm, keeping it hot. All right. Ron, uh, excuse me. Dizzy Mac. What's hey, going on? Well, you know, who, who said Chicago and St. Louis can't get along? I'm telling you, Houston will not lead the, the, the AL West. They won't. Okay. You're very definitive about that. All right, Joe. Come on. you uh, I believe will Houston lead. will lead. I believe Houston will lead the AL West. Okay. I'm going to say they will not lead the AL West by the end of our week. Um, as Art said, the Angels, they, they over, you know, they, they actually were in second and they took over uh, first place. So I don't think they're going to look back. And Houston will be a trade on them. So let's move on. Washington will not be in first place. At the end of the week, 300 for the correct answer, minus 400 for the incorrect answer. Art, going to you first. The Washington I'm going Nationals. To, I think the Nats, the Nats have it mostly because I think the rest of their division stinks. I mean, the Mets, come on. I'm not a believer in the Mets. The Mets had a few Ooh. pictures that if the Nats are there, they're going to be, they're still going to be on top. Yes, yes. All right. Dizzy Mac. Oh, yeah. I know you don't like to hear that one, though, first lady, about the Mets. Uh, no, uh, Washington will be in first place. I mean, Bryce Hopper is tearing the cover off the ball. Plus, we got to get the uh, Shimmy Seagirls to put the names on the cup because I think Ronnie B and Joe are sipping out of uh, Lynn's cup. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, what's your take on the Washington Nationals? The Washington Nationals will be in first. I learned a long time ago, First Lady in Stocks, you never fight the Fed. Okay, so your answer is no. So, um, Len? Uh, oh, yes, actually, first, I, I, yeah. Go ahead, Len. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I, I think I agree with the majority. I think that they will be in first place at the end of our week. Okay, and I'll go also agree. They will not be in first place. So my answer is no. All right, that's our pick. We'll see how we do coming up for next week. Before we go, it's time to find out what we missed this week. Dizzy Mac, what did you miss? First lady, you taught me something. I missed the United States getting bounced out of the Pan American Games by the Canadian national team. Woo! 111-108. Yes. yes. Like I said, nobody knew the Pan American games were on. Okay. Joe, what did you miss next this week? I, I miss Jordan Spieth collapse at the uh, Open. And, and uh, I went into work, and everybody was wailing about it. Of course, here in Dallas, everybody is pulling for Spieth. And, and I just figured that he closed it out. And, and uh, I went back, and it was over. So that was a big miss. 
All right. Art, what did you miss this week? I miss, where's all the talk about about, the Serena, about Serena Williams and her slam coming up? People, people uh, they, they don't appreciate the excellence that she's had o- over these years, and she's about to do something that's historic. That she's, she's got half the way there, and people are talking about it. Serena's three-quarters of the way there. She's, it's, it's, it's history in the making. You got it right. They should be talking about Serena. I agree with you. Len, what did you miss? I, uh, I drank too much lean this week, so of course I missed, I missed everything about it. <laughs> you missed everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Ronnie B., what did you miss? I miss Josh Smith. He of, he of in NBA professional basketball crying that his family can barely make it, uh, on the nine million dollars that they'll be paying him next year. How do you make it on nine million? Come on, what do you expect? Oh, yeah, I, I, I know it's tough. It's tough, you know. Tough. So he was complaining tough. about the minimum pay that he's getting of nine Wait. million dollars. Wait. Nine? He can it sound like a uh, trail spree rail. You remember when he said his family couldn't live on the money? And what happened to him? He was no longer in the league. So <laughs> careful. <laughs> Well, let me see what I missed. Well, I missed – well, actually, I didn't miss it because I heard uh, Phil Jackson talking about J.R. Smith and the reason why, you know, some of the reasons why I think he um, traded him to the Cleveland Cavaliers because he said J.R. just couldn't focus. And he was coming to meetings late. And the reason why he was coming to meetings late because he had, was having girlfriends problems. I mean, come on, Phil. That's something that you don't devolve. I mean, really, that's something that you keep with the team and you keep with that player. So that's what I missed. Anyway, we'd like to thank our guest panelists, Art Peele yeah. from Shady Adventures and Lynn Kreider from Houston's hottest, co- one of Houston's hottest comics. So we thank you guys for being on the show. It was a pleasure, Art Lady. Okay, all right. So. It is that time. You have been listening to Bras, Panties, and Sports. See you next time. Come back again. Come back again.